Good morning and welcome to the North Charlestown Church of God. I'd like to welcome all of you that are in the building. Those will be watching and listening by, uh, again the webcast and a CD later on. I would like to ask if we got visitors and guests with us. Uh, first time ever, you're back here with us today. Silas Eisenbach, it's good to see you here this morning. Give him a hand this morning. We're glad to see you. I think back there in back, we've got Bethany, Travis, and Ellie Drake. Is that the ones I see back there? Give them a hand for this morning. Also, back there was uh, Mom and Dad there, so we appreciate them. Uh, Anybody else hadn't been here for a while back with us today? Well, again, we're just glad that you that are here today are here with us. A uh, couple announcements tonight will be our singing and our 6 o'clock service. If you have a song for the Lord, come back and be with us. Let Steve know what that is or whoever, my, him or me, whatever, will be putting it on the list. And then uh, we'll be having those songs. Also, Friday, we'll be having our uh, movie night and uh, it's called American Underdog and that'll be Friday night at 7 if you can, can come back and be with us on Friday night and enjoy that. A uh, few people have had some things done this way. Week, uh, Violet Bodkins had a shoulder surgery the other day. She's doing well but we want to keep her in prayer. Uh, Donna Summers had a hip replacement. Uh, she's going to rehab. If she hasn't already, we want to continue to keep her in prayer. Then Tammy Ross had a mass removed off of her kidney. And I talked to Jimmy this morning, and she is doing well, but she had some hard time with losing a lot of blood during that time. So certainly want to keep her in prayer. And then the week before, we had other people, such as Bob Goldforth. We're glad to see him here this morning. And uh, Charles Crane, I have talked to his son Chuck. He is doing well, but uh, still he don't have a lot of energy. Uh, praying for him to get doing better. Karen Grayson had a procedure done earlier last week. Certainly want to uh, keep her and all these others in prayer. Uh, for you that have asked us, our wife did have a back consultation this week. And what they mentioned about her neck, I don't think she wants to do. They were talking about fusing and putting bolts and screws. But on her lower back, they're going to be doing some MRI tests. So we'll find out more about that in the future. Lisa Davis, she had some tests this week, or went to your regular doctor, and you're still cancer-free, correct? So we praise God for that. Give the Lord a hand for that. So we're going to keep them in prayer. And then we've got a, a host of other people. I know a lot of people have been asking about back problems. They're going through some hurts and pains. Uh, Pat Williams back here, she's been having some problems with her back. Gary Higdon, I think, also. And I've heard a couple of you all others talk about that. So we certainly want to keep all these in prayer. But uh, anyway, just some of the things that we want to recall and keep these ones in prayer. And I've got some more that we'll mention at prayer time on that prayer list. Uh, at this time, I want to ask if we had any birthdays this week down here. 73. 73. Just a young pup, son. Anybody else? Birthdays back here? Young lady? Is that Teresa? Yeah. Okay, good to see you. Teresa, I didn't see you. Give her a hand this morning also. Anybody else? Birthdays? I know Mary went on a trip with her daughter, praise God. Sound like they had a good time. Mary Roberts. Anybody else? Birthdays over here on this side. Back here, any birthdays? Steve, will you lead us in that song for that? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Hey Amen. Give him a hand again this morning. Uh, again, any anniversaries? Anybody had an anniversary this past week? Back here. Uh, again, I mentioned the ones that have had some procedures done this week. Is anybody else that you know of been in and out of the hospital that I haven't mentioned this morning? We certainly want to, again, remember everybody we can when we can, but uh, keeping them all in prayer. Oh, Brenda Jones was another, and Ernie Thompson. He called for prayer to our text for prayer, so these are some others too, and some other, but anyway, 
going on with that. Right now, I'm going to ask Ronnie, and I did remember this week, but it's not that I don't care, it's just I forget. If you will stand with us, Ronnie's going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, and when he's finished, Steve's going to lead us in music. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Remain standing. Are you excited to praise the Lord today? Amen. You know, my wife had recently had a birthday, and on her birthday, she got a text with Andy and Eli, four years old, two year old, singing "Happy Birthday." Aww. Now, it didn't matter what it sounded like. It's that the grandkids, because they love their nana, was singing "Happy Birthday" to her. You know, God doesn't care what you sound like. He just wants you to tell you tell him how much you love him and how much you appreciate him and how much you you, you adore him. So when we're singing today, think about how much God means to you. And the first we're gonna do some, we're gonna do a chorus and it's not in the songbook, but it's gonna be on the screen. But since you're not holding the songbook, you could probably do this. And if I can do this with a certain uh, surgery on my hand, you can do it too. So.
turn to page 238. We did, we're going to do some courses here, so 238 is a short one. So you can put your book down after we do this one. Jesus is the sweetest name I know, and he's just the same.
We're going to get ready for our prayer at this time. I see David Wire in here today. He had a friend that's getting baptized today. Oh, good. He had been witnessing to him, and he called David and said that uh, he's getting baptized this morning. One of those prayed for him. Praise God. Amen. Amen. We're uh, going to ask you ones that do the anointing that you come on up here. Those that are here. Uh, as I said, Violet Bodkins had had, uh, again, shoulder replacement surgery, however that was. Uh, Tammy Ross had a procedure, and then Donna Sumner's with her hip replacement. Uh, still praying for uh, Karen Grayson, Charles Crane, Bob Goforth, and Bobby Ashburn. And then uh, pray for my wife with that, uh, again, whatever needs to be done, she'll be getting that MRI done this Friday, I guess it'll be. So we want to pray for her with that. Uh, still praying, as I mentioned, Ernie Thompson wasn't feeling well. He asked for prayer from us today. Also, Brenda Jones had asked for prayer too. Thank you. Uh, Diane Purley and uh, Rock Ann Kimball, we want to pray for them too. I'm thinking Sherry or somebody had given those to Pat. We want to keep them in prayer. Uh, still praying for uh, the Comptons, LJ's family. Still praying for uh, the Bodkins, the Whitlocks, and the Days. Uh, for the little children that's having some trouble. Nathaniel Williams with his legs. Our little great nephew, Atticus Humbert, with his eyes. Still praying for Darlene Roberts. Still, I think she's still been having some times. Praying for uh, Melanie Wire. Uh, praying for my grandfather, Bob Shepherd, for Gloria and Rick. I know they've been helping take care of her, especially Gloria. Praying for Brenda Ross and her mom and stepdad, Kathy and Gary Grant. And uh, still, uh, Chuck Crane and I talked to him about Charles the other day, but Chuck's been dealing with bronchitis for over a week now, so we want to keep him in our prayers as well. And then uh, there's a host of other people that's going through cancer and other health issues. We want to pray for all of them. And uh, taking prayer requests, like I say, a lot of back problems. I know Pat and uh, some others had mentioned their backs. Gary Higgins, I want to pray for all of those ones with back issues. Prayer requests for me all up here? Lisa, for your brother? I had traveling and my brother having all those. Okay, and that's tomorrow. Yes. Uh, and? Oh, I'd like to thank God for this beautiful day. It's cold, but it's beautiful. Amen. And thank God for putting this back together. I'm so glad to see your hand doing better, Steve. And Thank you. Backs are getting knitted together, and it's amazing the way God is taking care of our prayer requests before they come out of our mouth. Amen. It's amazing. Amen. And I'd just like to praise His name and give Him thanks. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. This morning. <laughs> Dallas? For me, I have some kind of allergic reaction to something. The doctor trying to figure out what it is. So. Praise the Lord, the you know, Dr. Pandawas, except he's, I guess, you know. Father? For Larry, he's having a long stay, too. Oh, okay. Gary? Uh, friends and family that are lost, and for those over there in Ukraine, it's one of the best. Yes. Why? Three unspoken. Okay. Steve? Uh, we're starting on the square May 7th, and we'd like for you to be there, but we'd like for your prayers because. It's a wonderful opportunity for us to get out on the square and sing in public, sing about Jesus. Amen. And uh, a lot of people that will be up there, be the only time they hear them. Mm -hmm. So we like that. You're all having a special next week too, aren't you? Next Sunday, right after church, we'll, the Real Square Band will be playing at the grand opening of the Ace Hardware Store. So we'll be singing the gospel up in front of the hardware store. So. Uh, it's a grand opening, so they're going to have, I think, hot dogs and all kinds of things. Jesus was a carpenter. <laughs> so so all you, you, don't, you don't have to fix dinner next or lunch next week. You just show up there, listen to some music, and eat some hot dogs. I'm sure they like you to buy some nails or something. Nuts like that. and bolts will be all right. Yeah. But yeah, we'll be up there. And then, uh, I, don't, I don't ever talk about it, but I got grandkids. And I, I don't ever talk about my grandkids, but... Uh, well, we've got another one coming in June, and we're going to pray for yeah. June 22nd, and uh, pray that he's Man. healthy, and uh, he's going to have a tough time, because the first two are so cute. But, uh, <laughs> but just, yeah, pray for Lisa and the baby. Amen. Amen. Prayer request on this side, Ronnie. 
I want to thank God for letting me be on this earth for 73 years. Oh, amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand. <laughs> Glad to have you here with us, too. Appreciate you helping here all the time. Martha? Other prayer requests? Tracy? For the loss and the cancer patients and also for Chuck and Jessica and a lady I work with, her name's Sherry, and she's got an infection and she needs prayer. Okay. Other prayer requests on down through here? Anybody else on this side? Anybody there in the back? Prayer requests? Over here on this side? Down through here? Kathy? My brother called last night and uh, Kevin and he and his wife Donna are having quite a bit of pro health problems right now and my other sister Pam is in the hospital oh. and unspoken. She's over here now too, isn't she? And she moved she's moved from... River Crossing. Okay. But they've taken her to Clark County, but she's good. Okay. She's good. She just needs prayer. Other prayer requests down through here? Anybody else? David? I have two cousins. Okay. Anybody else prayer request this morning? Okay. How many with uplifted hands for yourself or someone else? Again, God sees those hands. If you like this morning, stand. And anybody would like to be anointed, we have gentlemen down here to do that for us. You're welcome to come down here at this time. Anybody need to be anointed for prayer this morning? This is my
last week with the week before Karen Grayson and Charles Crane and Bob Goldsworth. And then last last week, Lord, for Violet Botkins and Tammy Ross and Donna Summers, we lift these up to you in prayer for those that have had tests. And Lord, those that have got good results and some of those that are still waiting, Lord. We uh, pray, God, to not today, Lord, for the ones that are having back problems, Lord. Pat back here in the back and then Gary here. And then, uh, again, I know my wife, that's what she's been looking at. Again, there's others, Lord, that have been asking for prayer with their back. I pray for Arnie Thompson today, Lord, as he's asked for prayer. Brenda Jones, for Diana Hurley, and Rocky Ann Kimball. Lord, we pray for Kevin Davis as he's having a, some look at my stepdad Larry Wiggum this coming week too. Some things having to check out. We pray for our country, Lord. We pray for the leaders of this land. We pray for Ukraine, Lord, and all the things that are going on there, Lord. And God, uh, again, you'd watch over and touch. We lift up Cindy Boggs as she'd had another procedure. We just pray that you'll continue to touch her. For those that are recovering from things that they've had done, not just in the past couple weeks, but over the past couple months, Lord, we pray for each and every one of them, Father God. We uh, pray, Lord, for family members that have been mentioned to be prayed for this morning and uh, for loved ones, Lord, that are being cared for, that God will touch and move upon each and every one, Lord. We pray for every family here today, Lord, that's represented those that are with us as well as those that are not. We pray your touch upon each and every one of them, Lord. We uh, ask you, God, to just move upon all of our lives. Pray for this service today that uh, you'll continue to pour out your spirit upon this congregation and upon others that are gathered today. Lord, may you show up in a special way. Lord, for those that are hurting inside, Lord, whether spiritually or emotionally or physically, whatever it is, Lord, we lift those needs up to you in prayer today. We pray for the hands that went up here this morning, for the ones that will be watching and listening another time, whatever their needs are, Lord, we pray, God, you're touching upon them. Again, for our country, for our military, our police departments, fire departments, metal departments, EMSs, our farmers, for all those that protect and serve, that you'll protect them, Lord. For the little children, Lord, for little Nathaniel, little Atticus with the legs and the eyes, we pray for healing. For mamas that are expecting, Lord, we pray for them and their babies and their families. We just uh, ask God that you touch and move them on every life, every need. Father, we thank you for this time. Again, we just ask God all our needs before you today and our greatest need of all is more of you and less of us. And we ask you to show up in a great way here today. We ask all things in Jesus' name and all God's children said. Amen. 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 This you. is my desire to
just pray over the altar. Father God, we just thank you today, Lord, for the opportunity to give for your work. We pray your blessings upon the tithe and offering. For those that give as well as those that have not to give, we pray for the needs of each and every one. And uh, again, Lord, bless everything that any of us do for your kingdom. Again, for this offering we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. with me today say this with me this is my bible this is the word of god it is a lamp to my feet it is a light to my path it's words will i hide in my heart that i might not sin against god all scripture is inspired of god blessed are the doers and not to hear his own way. Jesus name. Jesus name. Amen. You may be seated. Steve's going to do the special for us. Give him a hand this morning. You know, one of these days, I'm not going to have to worry about my hand being up. Mike almost dropped the camera there. Okay. I, won't, I won't have to worry about my hand being operated on it. I'm not going to have to worry about arthritis. I'm not going to have to worry about where my, my next meal is going to come from. Uh, I don't have to worry about athlete's foot. I don't have that, but if I... But anyway, uh, one of these days, all those worries are going to be gone.
church today. Not to be afraid of it, not to be ashamed of it, but, but to be desirous of it. We're getting ready to celebrate what we call Easter. I like resurrection better, but again, that's what we've entitled again that time of the year. But we're going to be acknowledging the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I hope as Christians we acknowledge that every day of our life. And you know, Paul in the book of Romans, he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power unto salvation of them that believe. But at the same time, there's a power beyond salvation that will help keep us strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Over in Acts chapter 1, it says that the, the former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. Until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostle, apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion. Many of us remember the movie Passion of the Christ. This is talking about his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to what? The kingdom, the kingdom of God. Sometimes we get politics mixed up with religion. And I know people say, I don't argue about either one. Well, more than likely you all do. But nonetheless, we get concerned about our home here on earth so much, we forget about the kingdom of God. Can I tell you that the kingdom of God is within us. The kingdom of heaven is where we're going. But it says, speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and it says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, Ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, 
But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. If we were to go back to Matthew and Mark both, I think both of them in the fourth chapter, I don't want to turn there this morning, but if you remember when John saw Jesus coming, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of this world. He said, There's one mightier than I whose shoe lashes I'm not previous to that, whose shoe lashes I'm not worthy to, to unloose. He said, I baptize you under repentance and water, but there's one mightier. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. How many of you know that we need that Holy Ghost power and we need that Holy Ghost fire today? Amen. I mean, we need an outpouring. Yes. Oh, I know that again, you can receive the, the indwelling power of the Holy Ghost, but I also know that sometimes we need to be refilled. Yes. Anybody need a fresh refilling of the Holy Ghost today? I can't think of any of us that we'd be truthful with ourselves that can't say that I'd, I'd like to be. It, it says back in verse 5 of Acts, it says, but, but John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, here we go again, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? They're worried about their nation just like we are too. And yes, I'm concerned about our nation, I'm concerned about our world, but I'm also concerned about eternity. How about you? I can't fix all the problems in this world, can you? Some of us think we can, but I've got to tell you, it don't matter if they're in the White House or whether they're in the light, we can't fix all those problems. But I know somebody that can fix everything. And I know somebody that's already working behind the scenes. Again, they're, they're concerned about the kingdom of Israel just like we're concerned about the kingdoms of America. But at the same time, if you remember back in the third verse, he, he said, speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God, there's nothing wrong with being concerned about being patriotic for your country and all that. And I believe God's still got a plan for Israel. And by the way, I still believe God's got a plan for America. How about you? I said, I believe God's still got a plan for America. How about you? Amen. I don't say I only got about four of you the first time. So you're not going to receive it if you don't believe it. And we got to definitely believe it for this world and for this country, of course. Because I know that, again, the way it looks, that we walk by faith and not by sight, right? That's right. But verse 7 says, And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times are the seasons, just like Matthew 24, and Mark 13, Luke 21, some others talk about the end times. We get all caught up in when the Lord's coming back. We need to be caught up in what the Lord's doing right now. <laughs> and what the Lord wants to do right now. Because if I remember right, the Bible says, look out upon the fields, for they're white, and ready to harvest, but the labors are few. This world's looking like a hellhole, ain't it? It's looking like a lot of people are lost and messed up without hope in their lives no more. I mean, we can talk about all the rotten things people do, but I tell you, the rottest thing is, or the rottenest thing is, is people just don't have hope in their hearts anymore. They don't have nothing to look forward to, so they're living today as if it's the last day and... and we ought to be doing it in a sense too, but not in the sense that there's nothing afterwards because we're looking in eternity. But it says, verse 8 says, But ye shall receive, what? Power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be, what? Witnesses. Witnesses. Unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost parts of the earth. Ye shall be witnesses. <laughs> you all remember the song? Lily of the Valley. 
Let your sweet aroma fill my life. Rose of Sharon, show me how to grow in beauty in God's sight. Fairer of 10,000, make me a reflection of your light. And here's the name of the song I'm talking about. Day star, shine down on me. Let your love shine through me in the night. And that song goes, Lead me, Lord, I'll follow. Anywhere you open up the door, let your word speak to me. Show me what I've never seen before. And here's what I want to get to. Lord, I want to be your witness. <laughs> wow. And it says you can take what's wrong and make it right. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Day star shine down on me. Let your love shine me, shine through me in the night. Lord, I see a world that's dying, wounded by the master of deceit, groping in the darkness, haunted by the years of past deceit. But when I see you standing near me, shining with compassion in your eyes, I pray Jesus shine down on me. Let your love shine through me in the night. That song's about I want to be a witness. <laughs> you can take what's wrong and make it right. I, I want to be a light to a lost and dying world. I don't want to be a headache. I don't want to be a burden. I want to be a light. I want to be salt. I want to be something that shines and something that I don't have to beg somebody to come to church. Not, not that that's wrong. But somebody can sense the love of Jesus in you so much they want to get up and go to church with you. They want to go where you're going. They want to be where you're at. Not because you're a good person or a great person or anything else. But because they know that you've been with Jesus. And they know that something's working inside of you. And that's something as a person. It's a personality of God. It's called the Holy Ghost. And He's within us and will allow Him to be. And He wants to work in all of us. But we've got to remember, we need that power. And that's what they're saying there in Acts 1.8. Jesus is talking to His apostles. But He said, Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witness unto Me in Jerusalem, and Judea, and Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up in a cloud, received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye man of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you've seen Him go into heaven. You know, over in the Gospels, it talks about if they tell you that He's out in the wilderness or He's out in the desert or He's here, there, yonder, don't go chasing after that. A lot of people have claimed to be Christ or some kind of anointed this, that, or the other that will get you to try to follow. He said, no, you don't need to be doing that. That Jesus that you've seen going up, you're going to see Him come back one of these days. Yeah. Don't go chasing something somebody's telling you and I'm going to follow a spaceship or going to follow somebody into a barn or some kind of <laughs> this, that, or the other. There's been people that have been burned up, poisoned to death and everything else because they follow something other than what God spoke to them. And that's just a warning. But, but it says... And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up in a cloud, received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, You man of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go unto heaven. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olives, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, Zelotus, and Judas, the brother of James. 
These all continued with one accord. Wow. You know what that one accord means? They reunited with one mind. Their mind wasn't about the things of this world. Their mind wasn't about the arguments that we have. It wasn't about the confusions that we get all strived over. It was about one thing and one thing only. There's a promise coming down your dusty road, isn't there? There's a promise coming. Remember, God had promised He's, he's going to send something. But it, but it says, These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with His brethren. If I do my calculations right, they're called to go up into this upper room and from the time of Passover, which Jesus would have died on preparation day just before Passover, and this is the full, this is the day of Pentecost, Jesus was in the tomb for three days and then He said He was seen of, of them for many infallible fruits for 40 days. So that's 43 days. There's 50 between Passover and Pentecost. That leaves seven days in that upper room. We sometimes do good, do good getting along with each other for seven minutes, don't we? Yes. Seven hours would be tough, wouldn't it? What about seven days? <coughs> it said they were in one accord. They wasn't up there bickering and backbiting with each other. They wasn't going up there having a fit with each other. They was going up there for one thing and one thing only. I'm not saying we don't have causes sometimes to deal with things, but I'm saying... If you got more than two people <laughs> and they're in the same place for that long a time, you've got to have something focused, don't you? <coughs> and their focus was on one thing and one thing only. I'm waiting for the promise. God told us that we'll tarry here, we'll wait here. He's going to send back some power that we definitely need. He's going to send back the Holy Ghost to empower us not so we can go out and show off our spiritual gifts. Most people get upset and all caught up into fighting over those things even. But so we can have power. I, I believe in all the gifts of the Spirit. The nine spiritual gifts that's mentioned in Corinthians, the motivational gifts over there. In Ephesians it talks about the ascension gifts. There's more than just the nine. There's many gifts that God's poured out. But the whole idea was so we could be His witnesses with power. So we would have the ability to be a light and a salt in a dark and messed up world. So again, in that upper room, I believe that they possibly could have spent seven days. In verse 1 of chapter 2, Acts <laughs> chapter 2 if you will, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Mm. Wow. Wow. They're still uniting. They're still in unison. I mean, they're still... And I'm not talking about unified with the world or unified with false religion. I'm talking about unified with God. Unified with Jesus. Because remember, Jesus had just talked to them and they've been talking about the, the kingdom of God and, and all that back in chapter 1. And, and verse 2 says, And suddenly, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven <coughs> as of a rushing mighty wind. And it did what? It filled all the house where they were sitting. I mean, they've been there for seven days. I'm sure they've got to sit down sometimes, wouldn't you? Yes. They were sitting and all of a sudden, a mighty rushing wind. How would you feel like today if a mighty rushing wind come through this sanctuary here at North Charlestown Church of God? I'm not talking about a tornado or a hurricane. I'm talking about the mighty rushing wind of the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about where every one of us was filled to running over. Wow. And it says, 
and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, divided tongues, different tongues, like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And we can argue about tongues all day long, but look at what they were for. <coughs> and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And it says, And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and was confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. How many people was in that upper room? It says about 120. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? God had just brought their languages together where they could speak the same thing in these tongues. And they were understanding that. If we was to go back to Genesis about the 11th chapter, you recall after the flood that men began to multiply and they began to start building a tire. It was called the Tire of Babel. You know what Babel is, don't you? Confusion. They were building that tower. And you remember what God did when they began to build that tower? He confounded their languages. Everybody began to speak another language. They couldn't understand each other. That's why when it comes to the Holy Ghost, we need the Holy Spirit to give us the understanding. They heard them speak in other tongues, and everyone understood them in their own languages. This isn't a message about tongues today. This is a message about the Holy Ghost that we need. You can put them together, that's fine. I believe that, again, those gifts of the Spirit are here for us today. But rather than arguing with everybody about this, that, and the other, let's look at what the purposes was. And, and, and it says, And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? And it goes through a list of, I don't know, about 18 different uh, languages there. And as we get down to the, the 11th, verse there says, talking all these others, and it comes to the Cretes, the Arabians, we do hear them speak in our own tongues. What? The wonderful works of God. However that manifestation come along, it was to reveal to them the wonderful works of God. Isn't that what God's wanting out of us today? You know, He talked about the kingdom of God. And now, uh, again, now we're talking about the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what mean that these? Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. They're drunk. <laughs> you know, when you start to live right for God, you start to behave the way the Holy Spirit wants you to behave, and do the things God through the Holy Spirit wants you to do, people are going to think you're messed up. <laughs> What's wrong with that religious stuff? What's wrong with that prayer? I mean, they're one of them Jesus deals. That's something, I mean, man, they, <laughs> they've been over there popping that stuff too long or something. I don't know what's going on with them. It says, these men are full of new wine. But Peter standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my word, for these are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. That's the Old Testament written about 350 to 400 years before this was even taking place. It says, And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will what? Pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. 
Like I say, Joel, the book of Joel was written about 350, 400 years previous to all this taking place. <laughs> And if you go back and read in the second chapter of Joel, it, it talks about there being a famine going on. And, and it talked about how God was going to restore them even through this. It talked about turning the hearts of the children or the sons to the fathers and the fathers to the son. It talked about the, the former and the latter rains. And it talked about how he was going to make it come down and, and replenish the earth where there'd be no longer a famine. If we were to turn over to the book of Amos, it talks about a famine also. It talks about there being a famine in the land, not for food and water, but for the Word of God. I think there's a famine going on in the land today for the Word of God. People don't preach it. People don't teach it. People don't read it. People don't understand it. Don't care to understand it. But it boils down to one thing. You gotta have the desire for His power. You gotta have a, a desire to see what God can do in us, and it's not because of who we are; it's because of what He can do. It, it says, "And I will show wonders in heavens above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor smoke." The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great notable day of the Lord come, and it shall come to pass. That whosoever, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Years ago, Sister Hannibal, Thelma Hannibal, she used to come to prayer time with us a lot of times and talk with us and and one thing she spoke about, she liked to talk, but she, she talked some good things. And one thing that she talked about is, I don't remember if she talked about somebody else or if she was, I think she told me that the Lord had showed her this herself. She said, the Lord showed her that this church here, that God was going to pour out His Spirit and the latter rain was going to be greater than the former rain. I'd love to see that, wouldn't you? Yes. Yes. I know there's been some former rain here. This church was birthed out of the work that God was doing through Brother Cash. Back in 1955, the things that were happening here. I mean, there was healings going on. There was miracles going on. There was signs and wonders taking place. Over there in that Thompson Fellowship Hall, I, I, I've heard a lot of things took place over there. And I don't know that it was so much the, the part of the building, but at the same time, Brother Cash was being obedient to what, what God was doing. And God was pouring out His Spirit. And, and again, I heard that, like I say, not one or two times, I heard that time and time again, that the Lord had showed her or someone else that God was going to pour out His Spirit and the latter rain was going to be greater than the former. That may not be in my time. I hope it is. Because I don't know how much time we got left, do you? It may not be through a person at all. I know God used Brother Cash in a great way. I'm open for him to use me in a great way. But I'm also open to get out of the way if he's got somebody else or something else he wants to do too. Because I know the whole ideal of getting people filled with the Holy Ghost was not so we could argue about our denominational doctrinal beliefs and all that stuff that we do all the time, but it was for us to be filled with His Spirit that that Holy Ghost power could flow through us and touch a lost and dying world that needs Jesus worse than they need anything. Isn't that what we need today is a great outpouring of His Holy Spirit upon us today? <clears throat> and again, regardless of the former and the latter rain, we just need a fresh power of the Holy Ghost. We need a, a great move of His Spirit in this day and age. And, and again, that verse 21, it says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 22 says, You man of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a, 
a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determined counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. And it goes on to talk about David. I'm not going to go through all that. But in verse 31 it says, skipping over there, it says that he seen this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. He did not decay, he didn't have time. This Jesus hath God raised up whereof we all are, there's that word again, witnesses. Don't you want to be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ today? I mean, you've got to want to be. You've got to have a desire. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, He, he has shed forth this which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended unto heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until... I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know surely that God hath made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. And now there's multitudes that come together. If we were to read all of that, and it says, They were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Man and brethren, what shall we do? Wow. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's a promise, folks. Ye shall receive... And it says, reading the next verse, it says, For this promise is unto you, you only, no. This promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off. God's Holy Spirit is still here today. He didn't remove it once the, the New and Old Testament were both written as some people would compel it. But God's Holy Ghost is still here for us today. Wow. For the promises unto you, to your children, to all that are far off. How many of you want your children to be saved and filled with the Holy Spirit? Amen. I mean with power. Mike, you got that little baby, little grandchild in your arms. Wow. There's others that are expecting babies. There's another little child over here. There's others, others back here in the nursery, some of the Wow. Not just to you, but to your children and to your children's children. Man, our kids need what we need, don't they? They need that Holy Ghost power in their life today to get through this messed up world. We need, we need that outpouring today. And it, and it says, and with it, and when. Many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they gladly received his words, were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about, wow. And again, if you go back and read his word for word, it started out with 120 people in the upper room. It talks about when they begin to be filled with the Holy Spirit, multitudes begin to gather together. But it says, after Peter preached his first sermon after being filled with the Holy Ghost, it says, there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Wow. Wouldn't that be wonderful to have 3,000 souls get saved today? That'd be this church five times, well, four or five times over. We'd fill up every church in, in Charlestown pretty well because I, I don't know of any that's got 3,000 seats. And even if they did, that's a multitude of people getting saved, isn't it? They didn't stop with those 3,000 souls. They went out. 
And with the power of the Holy Ghost, they begin to minister, and then other people begin to get saved, other people begin to get on fire for God. Wouldn't it be great to have a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit today? Amen. Remember the title of our message? We got the power in the name of Jesus. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Though Satan rages, we shall not be defeated because we've got that power. Will you stand with me this day a little bit after noon? We need the power of the Holy Ghost in us today. I'm not saying we've lost it. I'm not saying we've never got it. But I'm saying we need the whole thing. We need to be filled afresh with His Holy Spirit. You know, it did say this is unto you and to your children's children and to many as is far off. But the first qualification to being filled with His Holy Spirit, His Holy Ghost power, was you got to be saved got to be born again. If we met that qualification, the other one's already there. It's a promise. But we need to make sure most of all that we know that we know and I know that many of us already know that. And again, I'm not trying to get people saved ten times a week. I'm just saying, if you're not sure where you stand up with God, we never want to miss out on that opportunity. <coughs> We're going to have a prayer. For those that are watching and listening, as well as you that are in the building today. And if you don't know where you stand at with God, make sure that, uh, again, you pray along with us and tell somebody. Just a simple prayer like this. Say, Lord Jesus, I ask you today to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you today to receive me as your child as I've received you as my God. I confess my mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord, and I believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead. And with my confession and with my belief, I'm ready for heaven. And I'm saved on my life. You can pray a simple prayer like that today if you have. Tell somebody. Tell me. Tell somebody. If you're watching or listening, you can call or email, whatever. Let somebody know. But as far as Christians, we need His power. We have the, this last song here today. If you need something from the Lord, call upon the name of the Lord salvation, of course, but call upon the name of the Lord to be filled afresh with this Holy Ghost power. Whatever your needs are, ask and you shall receive. Ask and thankfully. If you have a need at this altar to pray today, we've got this last song. We'll dismiss the prayer afterwards. But if you have a need of prayer yourself, you're welcome to come down and pray. If you need somebody to pray with you, I'd be glad to do that. If not, however you feel. But right now, let's close the song. All to Jesus I surrender. All to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence.
He doesn't change, does he? Praise God. Let's close in prayer. Father God, we just thank you today, Lord, for this time that we've had gathered. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for song. We thank you for testimonies. We thank you for all that have been done, for all that have gathered in this house, for all that have gathered watching us at another time. We pray your anointed blessings upon each and every one of us. And God, we do pray for a great outpouring of your Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord, we know that, again, the promise was done to your children, your children's children, to those that are far off. And God, we ask you for a fresh and well empower the Holy Ghost upon the church today, Lord, upon the body of Christ, Lord. Help us to be in one accord, one mindset, and help us to receive what you have for us today. Lord, we welcome your Holy Spirit to do a work in every one of us and help us to be that, that witness that you called us to be. And pray for those that are watching, listening for the same thing and for the needs of all. And we pray and ask it all in Jesus' name and all God's children said, Amen and amen. amen. God bless you. Remember tonight, 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock choir practice. But the same it'll be tonight. If you have a song for the Lord, come back and be with us. We'll have a great time in that. Remember also our Wednesday night service and then also Friday with the movie night. Have a great day in the Lord and God bless.